Well hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Wildry Garden and in this video I want to talk to you about a tree slash large shrub depending on its situation that is really really underrated. Now we'll come on to it in a moment but I want to say to you first that two things. One, I'm wearing a fleece. You might think that's pretty insignificant but it's the first time I've worn one all summer which means we're now in the middle of September, temperatures are starting to drop and we're heading towards autumn. And because of this wonderful, and it really is a wonderful time of year, it means that we're now seeing our hedgerows laden with berries and fruits, hawthorns, sloes, rose hips, blackberries, um, dogwood berries, you know, elderberries. Um, nature really is at this point providing so much food for all our birds, mammals, and many other species as well to see them through the winter time. So my message before we come on to the brilliant tree that is the elder is that if you can spread the word as to not cut your hedgerows back at this time of year, I'll put a link in at the end of this video to a video I've just done recently on our hedgerows and the importance of managing them correctly and cutting back if you can later on in the year towards the end of February so that the berries aren't smashed off at this time of year and all that food source, all the energy that's gone into making the berries that we see along our hedgerows at this time of year is then of course wasted. It's just an absolute waste of a natural food source for so many animals throughout the winter months. So if you haven't seen that already, check it out. It's a, a video I'd like to try and spread the message of a little bit more if we can, because it really is an important one. Breaks my heart to see flail mowers in particular in the winter, in sorry, in the autumn months now, going through and knocking back all the natural food sources. Anyway, enough of that. Let's come on to this brilliant little tree. Now, elder really is a cracking tree. It's one that you'll probably see as a weed species or many people would see as a weed species. It's a bit like Budlia in a way. It kind of crops up everywhere, the side way, exactly where you don't want it, the side of a path or in your patio perhaps. Um, but it's just brilliant. It's the sort of thing that, you know, I remember as a kid, there was one uh, in my parents' garden that um, my dad would kind of religiously try and chop down each year back down to ground level because it grew, was growing sort of right out the corner of his shed but to get it out meant taking up some slabs and <laughs> all sorts of work so uh, yes they are the sort of plant that grows in unwanted spaces but that's what makes them great that's what makes them pioneers and enables them to grow in places where you wouldn't necessarily expect to find um, small trees. Now elder is great for many reasons and we'll start with the obvious one the berries look at that these berries are so heavy at the moment and the tree is so laden with them it's actually dragging the branches down you can see that branch should be somewhere up there but because of the weight of the berries it's sagging right down which is absolutely brilliant this is nature's larder if you like this is nature's way of providing food for things like dormice actually will eat the berries but they'll also eat the flowers as well in the spring so the berries are great for a lot of visiting migrant species of birds things like field fares red wings um, thrushes, um, you know, robins will even eat them, blackbirds. So they really are a great source of food. But for the mammals as well, like I say, sort of wood mice, all sorts of creatures will eat them. And of course, insects, you know, wasps and things, when fruit gets overripe, things like uh, plums as well, in particular, um, butterflies such as speckled wood, comma, uh, red admiral, our kind of last sort of uh, end of the year butterfly species will often, uh, you'll see them if, you know, with their. Uh, proboscis out kind of imbibing um, all those wonderful sugary tastes from rotting fruit if you see them on fruit at this time of year that's what they're doing uh, wasps as well like i say um, so the fruit is really good for so many creatures but before then obviously you have the flowers which are out kind of may time which provide a lot of nectar and pollen for things like hoverflies and flies in particular are big pollinators of this tree um, and they really are great for just providing that nectar source um, these trees are actually hermaphrodite, so they have all the male and the female parts on the same um, same plant. So, you know, they don't provide, they don't, unlike hollies where you have the male and the female, the, they rely on one pollinating the other. Everything is on this plant for it to reproduce itself. So really great. And you can see it's just absolutely full of berries at the moment. Look at this branch down here. <laughs> That's just weighted up. It really is. Absolutely fantastic. Really good to see. I know you see it a lot with sort of apple trees and things at this time of year as well, but absolutely brilliant to see. Just love this tree. So you've got the flowers, you've got the berries. Also, 
it's a larval food plant for um, several moth species as well, things like the buff ermine, one of the pugs as well, I think. Um, so there's a few species of moth that will actually lay their eggs on this plant and then obviously the caterpillars will eat the leaves and pupate and the cycle goes on. So a really good treat and they are a really kind of waste ground pioneer, a bit like Budleys again, where they will just kind of pop up in cracks in a pavement. I've seen them on chimney pots. I've seen them, you know, in all manner of places where nothing else will seem to grow. Elders are there. They are a brilliant species. They will live for a few decades, not, not too many. I think they live to about 50, 60 years old. That's about the extent of their life, but they really are a great plant and one that can provide nesting potential as well if they are cut back regularly to provide multiple stems, a bit like the coppice management you would carry out for things like hazel, dogwood, um, and gelder rose in the coppice belt management. Um, and I have done videos on that. I'll put a link to uh, one of the videos at the end of this one. So if you are looking to manage any of your kind of bigger shrubby areas, coppicing is a really brilliant technique for so much wildlife it really does work very well so check out that video as well but yes the humble elder it's one that's not got a great reputation it's one that we always seem to be chopping back or people seem to be spraying or poisoning to try and do away with it and uh, it's such a shame because it's such a beautiful plant and has this lovely you can't really see this one's not too old um but it, you can, I suppose, make it out. It's this lovely kind of corky bark, which as it gets older, I'll take you to see this one now. There's another really big one just here, which is absolutely fantastic. And um, they are kind of indestructible, you can see, because <laughs> the fences on this job have obviously cut one back to put a fence in, but it's not bothered. They are kind of almost bulletproof. A uh, really nice specimen, some lovely ivy in there as well for a lot of the insects that are going to be coming out soon or the last of the kind of summer insects, wasps, red admirals. Ivy, video coming up on that before too much longer. Really underrated plant. But yes, you can see this one has just been sawn through and it's, <clears throat> excuse me, not even too bothered. Um, really nice old tree, this one. This is probably 40, 50 years old, I would have thought. It's lovely kind of flaky peeling, corky bark absolutely fabulous tree but they are just such a brilliant tree oh and i should mention as well that when um they are in a kind of river setting here might just be able to hear it trickling down there it's a tiny little brook um not saying there will be fish in there but i've seen it before on bigger rivers where they overhang and the berries drop into the water um, fish species such as chub will eat the berries as well so from fish to mammals to insects <coughs> this plant really does provide everything they need and I really do think they are worth having in a garden and it because it's such a shame because you you kind of hear of the the natives when you think of a a hedgerow planting list you think of you know hawthorn dogwood spindle gelder rose the usual suspects if you like but elder really should be added to those lists because as you can see it's an absolute beautiful tree at this time of year and providing a lot of food for nature so elders if you haven't thought about them get some in your garden they will spread obviously they will need a bit of managing i'm not saying you'll want everyone that sort of crops up to uh to uh, <laughs> to have in your garden else you'll end up with a patch of them no doubt not that that's a bad thing we've got another one another one here look um a lot of the ways these spread by the way are through the droppings of birds and things like rabbits as well you often see a lot of these around kind of rabbit warrens in in sort of open scrubby field settings because the rabbits will have dropped the seed you know that the the seed has gone through the entire digestive system same with the um, blackbirds and things and quite often the seed you know it goes through intact and then comes out as a dropping and then sets seed and germinates wherever it lands basically that's why you find them cropping up in some wonderful places so just brilliant a wonderful wonderful tree and one that i hope can gain a little bit more respect because they are very very underrated anyway i hope you've enjoyed the video guys um make sure you get out there enjoy the colors around the countryside at the moment as we go into kind of the end of september and into october as well some brilliant brilliant um things to be found in terms of the color of the leaves that are going to be changing really really wonderful so thank you very much for watching stay tuned um, many more videos to come and um, yes I'll be hopefully doing a few more videos 
depending on when this goes out before my recently announced trip to Panama so yes if you haven't seen that video already do check it out depending on when this comes out but obviously I'll have a whole Panama playlist for when I get back which hopefully you guys will enjoy so please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already give the video a like if you've enjoyed it and I'll be sure to bring you many more videos on all the ways in which you can help wildlife in videos to come thanks for watching I'll see you soon mm -hmm.